to another Element 3D tutorial. My name is Josh Burns. In today's video I'm going to be showing you three techniques on how to enhance Element 3D's glow and illumination output passes. For this first example I'm going to be using this scene here. This is a pretty old scene. It's one of the first things I made in Element. But what I'm going to show you today is how to use a second element layer to create some interesting lighting effects. So what you want to do first is duplicate your element layer, move it to the top. Next thing you want to do is go down to the output and choose illumination. All you get is the illuminated materials and no other materials in the scene are illuminated except for the center core. So even though I have glow turned on here it's not showing up because it's just showing the illumination. Next thing I want to do is add light burst. Turn it up quite high and also the ray length. And so what this is going to do is create light rays. When the core is completely visible it will flood the scene with light. I wasn't completely happy with the bright orange of the core so I just added a tint layer and turn the tint amount down a little bit just to let some of that orange uh, bleed through but leave it mostly a clean sort of a white glow and then you just set the layer to add and there you go so now when the ring passes in front of the light it'll create this nice sweeping effect and when the core is completely visible it'll really flood the scene with light giving the idea that this uh, core whatever it is is emitting a lot of energy now one of the things that's always been a problem when you're using an effect like light burst which is a 2D effect, is it's hard to have it linked to the center of your scene. For example, if I were to move my camera over and the core is now over the side, that's not going to work because I'll have to move manually my center point. I found a script on motionscript.com, Dan Ebert's site, that allows you to link a 2D effect or 2D point to a 3D coordinate. So that's awesome. And here is the expression. So you go to light burst and you go to the center and you notice it only has the X and Y coordinates. What you do is you Alt click, open up an expression, and what you want to do first is create a variable. So in this case, we're going to go L for light equals this comp dot layer, open bracket, and then you choose the layer that you want to be tracking. In this case, there's a light at the center. That's what I want to be tracking. Close bracket and semicolon. Next, we want to call up that variable. So go L dot to comp, open bracket, square bracket, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero, square bracket, close, bracket, close, and semicolon. And if you want an explanation about how this works or why it works, go to motionscript.com. So now wherever this light is in the scene, that's where the center of the light burst will appear. So you can also, you can attach it to a null or whatever you want. All right, now here is an example of the final product. All right, one down, two to go. So this next technique is a lot more subtle, but it does create a nice effect. So in this case, I've set up the scene so that the light, as the coin flips, sort of dances across the wrecked surface of the coin. So what I want to do now is add some diagonal light streaks that dance along with that. Again, this is the same sort of technique as before, where I grab my element layer and duplicate it, bring it to the top. In this case, I'm going to choose glow. Now, I don't actually have glow enabled, so you, don't, you won't see anything happen. But what I really want to do is turn the threshold up, so we're only getting the really, really bright highlights. So now if I turn off my background layer, you can just see the glow. And so you can see it's not very much at all. It's just a very, very small amount of glow that's happening. And that's really what you want for an effect like this because if you have too much it just kind of floods the scene and it doesn't look that good first off i'm gonna add a very slight fast blur just like three for the blurriness and then i'm gonna add a directional blur and turn it up quite high and go to a slight angle like this and again set it to add you can see here play around with a bit more so now if we were to render the scene see these nice little light rays dancing across the coin as it flips so you can play around with how much blur you want or or don't want when i chose to use this technique for this example i wanted it to provide some really good contrast for the uh, scratches in the coin so it adds that extra bit of emphasis on uh, just how ruined this uh, sort of two-face inspired coin is if you want a bit larger light streaks, what you could do is just turn up the glow radius. And on the final output of this one, I also turned up the chromatic diffraction in the glow settings in Element. Okay, for the last technique, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the element layers to create some scene reactive lighting effects. This is like the simplest thing, and I've been doing it since I've been using element, and it's a really good, simple way 
to uh, give your scene that extra little bit of interest. This last technique, since you are duplicating the element layer so much, has the highest likelihood of blowing up your after effects, but it creates a nice effect. So basically I have my scene here. It's uh, I made a little reactor, a uh, little arc reactor sort of looking thing, and uh, lights up in the middle and looks kind of cool. Basically for this effect, all I'm doing is I'm adding another version of my layer and I'm setting it to illumination, so only the illuminated layers are visible, and then just stretching the crap out of it and putting a blur on it. So you can see here it's just off to the side, blurred, and now if I go ahead, see that line here? It's because I have uh, repeat edge pixels turned on, so I'll turn that off. So you can see here now it's creating this sort of little bit of extra lighting here in the corner, but the nice thing is when the light ramps up, these will also lighten up. And also if you turn so that the light is no longer visible, these will also disappear. So I did it again, so just made another layer, squashed it a bit more, and in this one I actually used two fast blur layers. One at uh, 360 blurriness for the uh, only horizontal, and the other is for vertical and it's only 150. So you kind of get some of that shape, um, some of that core brightness with the two lines and it's again just really squashed and then uh, I did one more and this one all I did was scale up the layer blur it a bit just to you know cover up the pixelization and then just turn the opacity down and offset the layer a bit so you can kind of see it's almost like it's uh, reflecting the glow on a piece of maybe glass that's between you and the reactor so yeah as you can see here now when I rotate the camera around and less of the glowing illuminated material is visible that light also dies down so it gives you that sort of reactive scene where you don't have to do anything after you have this set up all you have to do is move the camera and it affects the scene so here's the final output so there you go three techniques to enhance the already existing lighting effects available in element 3d if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and for those who take the time to subscribe to my channel like share and favorite my videos thank you very much i do appreciate it this has been Josh Burns. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you later.